Hi guys, welcome back to the luxury live show. Sorry for the short delay with the technical difficulties. I hope this time it's working. Um, and I hope that you guys had time to rejoin the new session. But anyway, so today we have a very, very special okay, occasion and a live show for you guys. We have a very special guest, which is Saki. And she is known for her beautiful pink collection and her love of pink. And it's very late for her. She just finished work. So without further ado, I'm just going to bring her in. Hi, Hi. babe. Hi. 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 Hey. We made it. <laughs> yes. Well, it's my fault. Like, I don't know. I mean, I think I know what, what happened because I created the session such a long time ago. I think when I created it, I said it as private, which apparently StreamYard or YouTube has a problem with that. So next time I'll just do unlisted instead. Anyway, you don't need to know this. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to remember this. Um, but yes, thank you guys for joining us. Yes, finally, the chat is working. So today um, we're going to dig Saki's brain. We want to ask her everything about, well, just everything about luxury, about her collection, why she loves pink so much. And of course, mm -hmm. congratulations, Saki, for your latest Hermes bag, your beautiful special order, which is so cute and amazing. So we're gonna we're gonna go all over everything. Uh, and of course, guys, just as a reminder, if you have questions for Saki or if you have a comment that you really want us to see and so we can pull it aside type question marks in front of it so that we can really, really see it. But you guys know the drill. So I think um, I'll, I'll start with the first question, Saki. Um, tell us a little bit more about you, like in case no, someone doesn't know you here, uh, like your hobbies, your passions, anything that you want to share about you. Sure. So, hey, I'm Saki. It's been a while since I've been on YouTube because life has been crazy. So. Um, it feels um, a little bit nervous. So, um, yeah, I'm Saki. I love luxury. Um, however, I am a mom. I have a one-year-old, and um, he's actually sleeping in the next room right now. Um, I own a restaurant with my mom, so I do that pretty much full-time, and then I do um, like luxury stuff in YouTube and Instagram on the side. I love content creation. Um, I love the color pink, obviously. Um, I don't really have that many hobbies because all I do is work and then now I'm with my kid and also I'm going to school right now, um, to change careers. So in terms of like free time and hobbies, I don't really have many things, but, um, oh yeah, I'm also going to school for, um, computer programming. So that's what I've been doing during the daytime and working at night and luxury on the side. So that's kind of like my whole spiel. <laughs> um, I used to do YouTube like once a week, but ever since I started going to school, I haven't been able to do it so much, but, um, I'm glad to be back. I'm so happy to be chatting with you guys. I've been watching your videos a lot, after, especially after I got my Birkin, because I know you guys are Hermes lovers, and I feel like I just <laughs> kind of started getting into Hermes more. So yeah, I'm really excited to be here and excited to chat with you guys. We're excited to have you, Saki. And uh, mm. we have to say hi to mom. Yes, I was just going to say, I wanted to shout out to Saki mommy, because, uh, well, Saki shared with us that she, her mommy watches us and I'm like <laughs> oh my gosh I'm so honored so yeah. thank you so much mom yeah yeah thank she's you, so mommy. excited she watches all of the um shows live too so I think oh she's watching God. right now so is she actually oh watching my gosh, now? Thank you. I think so she's yeah oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much yeah but she's so happy oh <laughs> well speaking of your mom I know that uh you and her kind of shop together which is so mm -hmm. cool like I you know, whenever you share your stories about how you guys share your bags and you guys um, also, I think, go to your appointments together, that must be so special because I definitely don't have that experience. And my mom doesn't yeah. is not into luxury, <laughs> even less about bags. So, <laughs> yeah, um, it's funny because you would think that um, she got me into luxury, but it's actually kind of the other way around. Like when I was younger, um, she had like Louis Vuitton bags and things like that, but she never really got into luxury. And then it was like after I bought my first Chanel wallet on chain and she was like, oh my God, I love this. And so then she kind of started getting into luxury too. 
And um, yeah, like you said, we do, um, we don't share bags necessarily. We have like separate collections, but we do like to go shopping together. And um, we do kind of share like an Hermes account. That's kind of like how I was able to get this special order. Um, I am very picky <laughs> with the things that I buy, obviously, <laughs> since I only like one color. So it's been like, it was really hard to um, get started on the Hermes journey, but luckily my mom is a huge Hermes fan and she loves like the shoes, the jewelry, the accessories and all that stuff too. So, um, I mean, I don't know if we're going to go into detail about it um, a little bit later, but yeah, so we kind of like combined there and then she's able to get like the bags that she wants. And then I literally only had one bag on my wish list and I was able to get it. So <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So we're talking yeah. about your pink love, right? Um, is your mom into pink as well? Like is she as um, a single color, like only loves pink or she's more like rainbow or there's a specific, you know, two or three shades that she goes for? She um she does love pink, but not as much as I do. She has like normal color bags. So she loves like the neutrals. She has a lot of like black and gold. She actually has like her two holy grail bags or the Chanel classic black medium with gold. And then she has a Birkin 30, same black and gold. Um, mm -hmm. and then yeah, she has pink bags and she has a blue bag and a white bag. So she's kind of like all neutrals with a pop of colors but I don't know how I like started just to obsess with pink so much especially in the um like luxury world um I I honestly thought like when I started collecting bags that I would stray and like oh maybe get a neutral here and there but it's just like hasn't been in the cards for me I just have really stuck with the pink theme this whole time. Do you, do you remember when you sort of like uh, the first time that's that's the color that you like, oh my gosh, it's that dress that started it all, this pink yeah, obsession. I do. You do? I do. Oh, yeah, okay. it was when, it was actually when I was like really little, I had this Hello Kitty dress and it was pink Ooh. with the Hello Kitty like right here. Oh my and gosh. I swear, like I wore it all the time. My mom used to take me or take a bunch of pictures of me in this dress and like, I think ever since then, I've always loved pink. I just didn't think I would, like, take it this far where it's, like, literally. I, I joke with my <laughs> friends. It's, like, not just, oh, I love pink. It's, like, a defining trait to, like, my entire personality. Which is, which is so. amazing because it's, uh, it's, it's you. Like, it's part of you, right? So it's more yeah. than just, like, oh, I love pink. It's, it's actually, I am pink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is so cool. Pink. Actually, let me ask you. So, um, so the way you describe how like you were little and then you just you just decided that one day that's your color. Have you always stayed like that since that moment, or did you at least experiment a little bit in the, like I don't know maybe in high school or something like that? So kind of like in high school, I was into like the whole punk rock and like right. you know, kind of vibe yeah and so I really liked that hot pink color with like black so like it's always been pink it's just been like different shades of pink paired with like different colors and because mm. now it's more pink and white as you can probably tell um but yeah I've just I've always loved it I've never I experimented with some colors here and there but I always go back to pink <laughs> okay <laughs> actually let us can you tell us how you start uh, started getting into luxury so from my yeah. understanding you're the one who actually got into luxury first and then your mom got influenced by you and then now you guys are kind of the tag team so how did you get into luxury um so it wasn't even that long ago I feel like it was in um like around 2016 or 2017 and I think I I've always like admired luxury. I think a lot of people have the same story where they like see Chanel bags and they're like, oh, it's like my dream to own one, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I never really thought anything of that until I um, discovered the pre-loved market and I saw like this Chanel wallet on chain um, and it was being sold for, I mean, still a crazy amount at that time. I think it was like a thousand something dollars and I had never spent you know that much money on a bag myself before and I did some more research on it and like I think once I discovered people talking about on YouTube and talking about like how you know secondhand is like a good like place to go if you you know are start, start starting to get into luxury for the first time and 
Um, I think part of the reason why I never got into it too, because I was really scared of going like in the stores and like, mm-hmm. I didn't really know what it would be like if people would judge me for like being young or not like looking sophisticated enough. I don't know. <laughs> and yeah. so, um, yeah, once I discovered that pre-loved was a thing, I had researched like a lot um, about the wall on chain. Cause I think it's a good starter bag. Like even now I would suggest people like, you know, it's a really good starter bag. And, um, yeah, I found this like perfect light pink one that was in pretty decent quality and the shade was just perfect and I fell in love with it. And one day it was just like, I'm going to go for it. And so I ended up purchasing it. And it's funny because I actually hid it from my mom for like a while. <laughs> but I was like really scared. Like we're like, I'm an adult. Like, I don't know why I like, needed to, you know, I was just like maybe scared to tell her that I spent so much money on, you know, a, a secondhand bag. But um, once she saw it, she was like, oh, my God, that's so cool. And um, she, like, had the same dream of, like, wanting to own Chanel, but she just never, like, wanted to spend the money on herself. And I think um, seeing, like, how much I enjoyed mine, she was like, okay, maybe um, it's time to, like, spend a little bit money on ourselves. And I think, like, at that time, too, um, like, we started the restaurant together in 2014. So um, we kind of got over that hurdle of, like, you know, the first couple of years with the was starting a business it's kind of rough and so like at that time it was like kind of the perfect timing to where we were finally like earning a little bit of extra money and like Mm -hmm. not so much like struggling with um you know just what it takes to like open a business at first um so yeah I think it was just like perfect timing then too and then yeah she also decided that she wanted to start her like luxury journey and we both like she had some Louis Vuitton bags, like I said, um, from when she was younger. But then um, we both pretty much jumped ahead in Chanel. Like we both fell in love with the brand. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of how everything started. Oh, that wow. is so cool. So, speaking of, do you still have that bag? So, can you I show us your oldest? <laughs> I, I, I actually don't. I um, sold it, I think, okay. in 2019 because I got. Um, I got this one instead. This is that, like, you know, that you're oh, obsessed with. Oh, okay. everybody Everyone it. knows this collection. Yeah, everybody knows this collection. I was super obsessed with this collection. And I'm not the type of person who, like, wants multiple, um, like, versions of the bag in my collection. And so because I had bought this one, I was like, oh, I don't need my um, other wall on chain anymore. And even though it had, like, sentimental value, I was, like, using this one way more anyway. Yeah. And so um, I just decided to pass it on. And actually the funny story about that is that that was somebody's first bag that I sold it to. And like, she wow. was super happy. Yeah. It was so nice. It was like, oh. it came full circle and she was super happy and I sold it to her for a pretty decent price too. And yeah, it just like made me happy because it was just sitting on my shelf, not being used because I had used it a lot when I started, you know, my luxury collection and um, yeah, it was just really cool seeing her super excited about it. And she was saying how she's going to use it a lot. And yeah, so it just like, that made me feel way better than just like keeping it on my shelf, you know? Amazing. Oh, that amazing. is amazing. Yeah, it was really cool. I love your background. So yeah, <laughs> now yeah. that we have you on full <laughs> screen, can you share your oldest and your newest bag? Well, obviously, I think we all know your newest bag, but we yeah. want to hear more about it. <laughs> Sure. Take so a look like, at it. So like, okay, we'll go oldest first. Like, do you mean oldest as in like oldest in my collection or like, because I have some yeah. pre-loved bags that are really old too. It's um, up to you. However okay. you want to interpret it. Well, uh, we we just want to see stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, totally understandable. Hold on. I'm trying to find it now. I have this one. Oh, here it is. I have this one really, really cool bag that I love to show. Um, It doesn't get very much like screen time on YouTube or on Instagram or anything, but it's this Chanel bag right here. So what's cool about this one is that this is a two series bag. So that means according to the internet, it came out sometime around um, like 1990 to 1993. And I was born in 1992. So I always think it's like my birth year bag and it happened to be pink too. Um, So yeah, it's like, 30 something years old and as you can see like yeah the quilts have flattened and everything but like the structure of the bag still remains and like 
obviously it's been loved and been used a lot, but I just think it still looks so beautiful for like, you know, how old it is. Um, and the inside is still pretty good too. I have like a piece of, I know it looks a little bit janky as <laughs> a piece of cardboard in here to keep the shape up a little okay. bit. And then I also have like a little organizer to kind of keep the shape as well. But on the inside, it still looks pretty wow. good too. Right? The color like is really pretty actually. It's like right? a dusty, dusty pink. Yeah, it's like a dust, yeah. dusty dark pink. It's so pretty. Yeah, I agree. And like when I saw it, just, um, you know, seeing the year that it was made in and seeing that it was pink and gold, I was like, wow, this is like my perfect like vintage bag. So I just like had to grab it. And I, I, I think I believe I got it off of the site called Yugi's Closet. Okay. Um, yeah, they're pretty good. And I don't even think that I spent that much on it. I want to say it was like 2000 something which is like wow i know i mean those were the days that you know when you can find really good deals on the pre-love yes. market now they're mm -hmm. almost at par right with the, the actual crazy. Yeah. yeah it's super insane i mean to think of it it obviously is very old and you can tell that it's been worn but like yes nowadays like even the luxury or vintage prices are super crazy so it's always mm -hmm. crazy for me to think about like how um how much the prices were even a couple of years ago so yeah it's, it's really, really it's gorgeous and Thank honestly you. even though it is vintage and it does have some signs of you know the quilting flattening down so the signs mm -hmm. of wear but yeah I have to say I you know and I, I don't like to I don't like to like always be negative about it but like recently the more i go to chanel and the more i look around the the more i feel more disappointed just because i don't know i just really felt like the quality did decline and it's actually noticeable now because yes they always talk about quality is declining overall in luxury in the luxury space but now you just actually see it and so having a piece like this is is just amazing do you actually still use it and how often would you say that you use it I do. I use it occasionally. It's not very often because I'm very like protective of it. It's very like mm. delicate. I mean, it's pretty sturdy for like how old it is or whatever, but um, just because of the lambskin leather and it's like just so precious to me in my collection, I don't use it very often. I mainly use it when I'm dressing more like, I, I want to say like maybe a vintage style or like where mm. like, like proper. Yeah. Cause I feel like um, it just goes with that style more because it is like a, you know, vintage bag. So yeah. that's pretty much the only time I use it. Um, yeah, it's just, it's mainly just um, like one of those, I don't have this very often where I keep pieces for like sentimental value or like as a collection piece, but this one I would say is definitely one of those pieces that I just bring out on like special occasions and I just like to have it in my collection. So it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see your latest bag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're all waiting. We're all waiting. And there's already a question. I'm going to yeah, see there's your bag. Already I'll a... that question. <laughs> um, yes. Let's okay. So it. this is. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Bag. <laughs> I know. I still get so excited when I see this bag, too, because I've, like, oh, been yeah. wanting it for so long. And, like, this is just the perfect one, you know? Um, so yes, this is my SO special order from Hermes. This is, um, a 25 sized Birkin in swift leather and it is in the color rose Sakura. And, um, I don't know if you can tell, but it's rose gold hardware as well. Yeah. I know Amy, you have a rose gold. Yeah. Rose Birkin gold sometimes too. looks silver depending on the lighting yeah. too. Yeah. Just yeah, so I've noticed that. It's it's kind of like the um, you know, Chanel champagne gold where it can look mm -hmm. kind of silver or gold. Yeah, it's very interesting. But in real life, it's it's so beautiful. You can tell it's like a very light copper kind of. Yeah. I feel like a lot of brands when they do rose gold, it's a little bit too like orangey or too yes. copper. Yes, but um, Hermes like has the perfect shade of rose gold in my opinion. I agree. Yeah. Wow. Oh, and then I have to show you the inside because I did do something special on the inside. I got it in the um pearl breeze wow. color. So wow. it's like pink and gray. It's like mint and strawberry ice cream or something. <laughs> like it's so beautiful. 
I love it. I think wow. um, one of the questions that I got asked a lot when I did the special order is like, oh, did you get anything special? Because, you know, a lot of people like to make the singles or the sides a different color uh -huh. or something like that. I think there's a couple, maybe a couple more ways that you can customize it. But um, for me, I just really wanted like the classic like Birkin look you know, one shade all around. And then I think just to, for me to like know that it, I mean, it's already special to me, but just to like have a little bit of like customization, I decided to get the interior a different color. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. I'm going to be one of those. I'm going to be one of those that has multicolor on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so funny because like I got comments saying that like people thought that my, like special order was a waste because they were like well oh, you didn't yeah because they were like you didn't really customize it at all like some people um like you're saying cat like get like a bunch of colors or like multi color <laughs> and go something you know go go all out basically all out. <laughs> yeah they go no, but all i can out. understand why i can understand why you just went with pink because pink is for, for firstly this is one of those special colors that don't come out very often anyway right yeah. this is one of those unicorn rose sakura colors everybody that i mean even just getting the just the standard like the not even the so just the one from the store yeah. is so rare already mm -hmm. so I yeah can, yeah I, I do a full pink on this one <laughs> yeah and i ask you why um so did you have the choice of the different leather because i know uh, it's common for swift to be made in rose sakura did they not make it in other leather or did you choose this leather yourself so gosh it's been a couple of years now it, i literally <laughs> ordered it in wow. 2021 that's how long it's been wow um so i can't super remember but i, I okay. do remember there being at least one other choice i think it might have been um chev or okay. Yeah, or one other color. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, they're, I think with uh, like Hermes is very specific with their um, special orders. Like I didn't do a ton of research into this because I didn't like ever think that we were going to get a special order, you know. Um, but I don't know if like it's common knowledge, but they do limit like which leathers can be in which mm -hmm. colors and then like which yep. style of bags can have like which color hardware and everything like that too. So like I and I've always been a fan of the um, Swift leather in the Rose Sakura. Um, it's just always been like this. I don't know if it's like the standard, but it's very common. And I've always just thought it was super beautiful. And so um, like I went in thinking that, okay, I really want the Swift leather with the Rose Sakura. And I didn't even think Rose Gold hardware was an option. So I was just going to get um, like normal gold. But then luckily that year, they offered Rose Gold to be chosen with mm. the Birkins. And my essay was saying that like right after I made my special order, like the next iteration or the next round, um, they had removed it or something like that. Oh, so wow. like, yeah, I just felt really lucky that like the moment that I got to like do this special order, um, they like let me choose basically like my dream combination. <laughs> Wow, that's meant so to special. be so special. Yeah, it's super special. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull a comment now uh, or a question sure. for you. Um, so it's for the for the love of bags, Saki. Are you at purse peace now that you have your so? Oh my gosh, purse peace. I almost think purse peace is a myth. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you can ever get there, but I I will say that I do feel a lot like a a lot more at peace than I've ever been in terms of like purse peace. And I think honestly, like it does have to do with my special order, but um, it also has to do a lot with like me having my son now. Um, I just don't spend too much time um, like shopping for luxury as much as I used to. And so I kind of already felt um, pretty good with my collection and it happened to be like right before I got pregnant, I was like really um, narrowing down my collection at that point too. So I was like always been in the process of like really curating my collection to be like, okay, this is going to be like my permanent forever kind of collection. And so um, now like since I've had my son and I haven't added anything really, and now that I have my special order, I, I really do feel like I'm either there or like really, really, really close to there. Actually, this is a great follow-up question for you. Oops. Oops, sorry. I was going to remove that. Okay. Go yeah, ahead. that's okay. 
Uh, Kobe girl, hello from Denver as well, Saki. So glad to see you here after scoring your Pink Dream Kelly and obviously your new SO. What is left on your wish list for Hermes? Your mom reminds me of mine. My mom also and I shop together. <laughs> That's awesome. I actually know who this is. She's um, said hi to me before, like oh. in the mall. So, hey, thanks for coming. But yeah, um, it's funny because literally I made a video, um, like I, I want to say like three, four years ago saying like, you know how we make wish list videos pretty much every year? Um, in that wish list video, I was like, okay, I'm just going to say it. Like, I know it's a far, far, far away dream and it's probably never going to happen, but I'm going to add Hermes to my wish list. And I was saying in that video that my two dream bags were um, specifically a Kelly in rose confetti with gold hardware and then a Birkin in rose Sakura with gold hardware. And I was kind of like, not so um set on like the sizes because I hadn't really seen the sizes in person and then I think maybe a year after that I ended up getting a Kelly second hand um from like a seller in Singapore and I had sold a couple of bags to get it and it just kind of lined up because the price wasn't as crazy as like you know they can get sometimes and I felt like okay if I just sell like three more bags I could get there <laughs> and so um yeah once once I got that I was really like okay so it, it is possible to obtain um, and Hermes, even if you don't go the traditional route. And I honestly thought like that's how I was going to get my dream Birkin too. I was always looking on the secondhand market to see, um, you know, looking at Rose Sakura Birkin uh, 25 and 30 because like those are the two sizes that I was willing to get. And um, I mean, obviously I, I had never um, like found the perfect one for the perfect price. They can get pretty pricey. Like yeah. the last one I saw was like almost – 40 and so oh. I was just like yeah it was wow. so insane and so I was just kind of like well you know I'll just keep saving keep saving and maybe one day I'll get there to where like I'm brave enough to spend that type of money on a you know secondhand luxury bag but um I actually so what happened is I told my mom that like okay these are my dream bags and the Birkin obviously is coming next because I already got my Kelly and she was like, I think I'm going to go into Hermes. And I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, we have one in Denver. Like we've never gone in there. And she's like, I think I'm just going to go check it out. Like, I, I just want to see what's in there. Cause like yeah. we had both never been, you know? And so I was like, okay, I think you're crazy. Cause I don't think that you're going to get a bag, but <laughs> sure. Um, but she's like a lot more brave than I am. And mm -hmm. obviously she's more confident too. So um, she went in and she like hit it off with this essay um, who works there. And like, they talk, they literally can talk for like four or five hours if given the chance, like they just um, get along so, so well. And my mom is similar to me in the fact that like, she doesn't just like buy everything kind of thing. It, it seems like she buys a lot because, you know, obviously to a regular person who doesn't love luxury like it, it is a lot of things um but compared to you know some of like the higher like vip clients who go there like she does not spend a lot so i think that's one of the other um i think you guys talked about this in another show like that's kind of one of the misconceptions is that you don't have to be um a huge like high roller or like you know, yeah a lot of money to like get offered things you just have to like build that relationship with your essay and like that essay is like the same age as me too and we both grew up in Denver and we like could relate because like his high school is kind of like near my high school and like mm -hmm. yeah so it was just like really cool being able to talk on like a non-luxury level as well and so I think um like the she said the day that she went in um she wasn't aggressive about it but she told him like hey my dream is to like help my daughter get a rose soccer Birkin oh my <laughs> god yeah. oh, and so she's sweet. I know right and she was saying that like she also told him like her dream bag was to get like a black Birkin and she had like she had um bags that she wanted as well but she was basically um told him from the beginning that she wanted to get like this bag and so um yeah I think like he must have 
kept it in the back of his mind like that whole time because um like we sh- every time a pink bag would come to the store he would like ask us and be like hey there's this Aww. you know pink i think it started with um the pink bow lead because she got a like i think it's called the 5p bubblegum pink um bow lead okay. 25 and she got that one first and then um she got offered oh i have it here she got offered this mini oh, oh, cute. Oh, <laughs> isn't it so cute can i just borrow it <laughs> yeah i wish i could just like give it to you like this <laughs> Yeah, it's cute. So, Beautiful. so the lead was in this color too. I think the year mm-hmm. that um it must have been like 2021, I believe. Mm-hmm. That year there was a lot of this color. And so she got offered those two pink bags. And like basically, um my essay was like, Okay, Saki, are you gonna are you gonna like is any of these yours? And I'm like, No, I'm very like I'm very when I'm set on something, I'm very set on it. So like mm-hmm. Um, I didn't want any other shade of Birkin. I didn't want any other color bag, or I didn't want any other bags besides that one. And so I was very lucky that like she was, she loves more colors and more things than me. So she was like, yeah, okay, that one's cute. I'll take it. Um, but she, I think he like, our essay also was really understanding and he like knew our restaurant and he knew like how hard we had to work for each purchase and he didn't mm-hmm. just like offer us things to offer us things he like pretty much only offered us like the things that he knew we would like and so that's why it felt like we were saying or especially my mom was saying yes a lot but um she like in comparison I don't I don't think she bought that many things but like yeah so um so it's an amazing amazing yeah. relationship yeah. And it's definitely yeah. possible, which is why, um, yeah. you know, those that really want to start and get inspired because, you know, all you need is like to click with someone that is genuinely kind and understanding. Um, yeah. This is what I also said in the past that I felt like the the main difference for me is that at Elmez, not to say that it's always been positive. There's There are negatives too, but... Oh, yeah. Um, in general, I feel like if you do have an essay and you do work well with your essay, it feels like you are taken care of, whereas I can't say the same with all the other brands. The other brands do feel a bit more transactional and um, it's just a different level of customer service too in terms yeah. of after service. Yes. Um, but yeah. I actually have a follow up to that because what you're saying about like getting taken care of. So like mm-hmm. that's how I was able to get this special order. Um, I don't know if this is I'm I am so like not <laughs> an Hermes like, you know, connoisseur or anything. So I, I'm not sure if any of this is common knowledge or not. But like um, essays only get to give out like a couple of special orders a year to their clients. I think my essay was saying two a year and now Mm -hmm. it might be even one. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly, but so um, one of the reasons why he like chose us to get a special order is like one, he knew that like this was my dream bag and it only Mm -hmm. comes up every, I don't even know how many years. And so what had happened was in the spring of, I think it was 2021, there they were making rose sakura birkins um mm-hmm. like to sell in store i think it was in the um silver hardware and so he knew that one was coming to the store and he was like he, he's not i don't know if he was like supposed to give the hint or not but he was like hey like there's a rose sakura like birkin coming and like i want to try to get it for you and i was like oh, okay. <laughs> even though it wasn't the um hardware that i wanted um i was still like i'll take it because like i still i have a couple of um silver hardware bags like this lady dior yeah. um so i don't like i'm not super against it or anything so i was like okay okay and then um what had happened was the manager like had approved it and everything but for some reason like right when the bag got there somebody else like another essay like got it for their client instead and like they Mm -hmm. kind of like skipped me in the line and um I was just like super sad about it because like it was the only one that was coming to the store Mm -hmm. and like oh man like I think he had yeah, I think he had felt bad too because like he was kind of like hyping mm-hmm, me up. Right. Yeah. And so um yeah, so when he explained that to us and I was like getting all sad, he was like, but wait. <laughs> and oh. I was like, what? Yeah. And he was like, 
Okay, but I actually have another offer to give to you guys. Like, um, I still haven't given out my second special order yet for this year. And it was like the end of the year. It was like late October. And he was like, okay, so instead of that bag, like, why don't you um, make your own and like you can do a special order? So like, that's why I was kind of bringing it back to the whole like customer service, like taking mm -hmm. care of you. Because I don't think any other brand would have cared that much, mm -hmm. you know? And he like just knew how much like I wanted the bag and how much like I would have to wait for it after this opportunity passed because like they just don't make this color all the time and so um yeah I felt really like I felt like he really like Aww. knew like knew me and took care yeah. of me and like it felt so special at that time too because like I like he could have offered it to anyone you know he has like mm. VIP clients who like spend a ton of money like way more than we do but like it just felt so special that like he saw like how genuine we were and like how I like much I really wanted this mm. one and like that's why he offered it to us so yeah I mean every story is different I feel like mine is really mm -hmm. unique in that sense so yeah yours I mean you this this bag this bag should never leave your collection it's like it's got <laughs> no, so never. so much stories like in 40 years you can tell us and everybody be like wow wow yeah exactly yeah I think this is definitely like a forever piece in my collection for sure yeah. Wow, that's really amazing. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for sharing so much about and the, the backstory. I mean, it's just incredible and how you ended up with it. And you said you waited two years for it, right? Yeah, we that's ordered really it. Interesting that it took that long to make. Mm. I mean, it's extra special yeah. for sure. I don't know. Did they have to find that perfect shade of green for the inside or something? <laughs> So it's, it's funny because like my whole camera system is like a little bit more on the green side, but the inside's actually like a light gray. Um, mm. So it looks, yeah. So it looks a little bit green, but it's very like, okay. yeah, it's very gray. But um, so I'm not sure exactly what happened. And I think my essay is also guessing at what happened, but um, it, it took a year and a half because we ordered it October, 2021 and we got it. Oh, April. the holiday probably. Yeah, we got it April yeah. 2023. So it was like the holiday and plus like um I want to say like COVID, but like you know yeah. um how like you know production yeah, production yeah. has been slowed down a little bit and like he was also saying something about like like dyeing the like rose sakura color mm -hmm. like sometimes I don't know. It was just a combination of things I think and yeah, it was to the point where like 2023 came and I was like, "Uh-oh, like are we still gonna get this back? like what's that did I make up that whole story like did I dream of like going to the Hermes <laughs> store and like doing the SO like I literally was going a little bit crazy but then yeah one, <laughs> one day he just called me and he was like okay come to the store and I was like why and he's like he wouldn't tell me he was just like come to the store and so yeah finally that it arrived so so. Oh, oh my gosh that's, so good. that's a story wow 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 okay so I, I mean, we have one question asking you, um, which is like your favorite bag, right? <laughs> and why? But I think <laughs> we will go. Okay, so we know the favorite is the SO. Maybe the mm -hmm. second favorite is the very first bag, which is the vintage bag. So maybe the third favorite. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's super hard because like I know that everybody thinks that all of my bags are the same. Like I get this comment so often, but I think they're all super different and I use them for like different things, you know, but I think, um, I know this is probably boring, but my other favorite bag is oh, like this Chanel. Yeah, Chanel. Yes. This is one good one. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't know if you can tell, I really like the classics. Um, the color that I chose obviously isn't classic, but I just love the like classic look of the classic medium flap and this one is also kind of special it's from 2004 so it's a little bit older but you can't really yeah. tell like it looks really good right yeah wow. yeah so mm -hmm. it's a pretty old one I think that um this is this like eight series bag is pretty sought after in the like pink luxury community mm -hmm. I know like the luxury community is already kind of niche but then there's like the pink luxury community. Yeah, think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that this color is also one of those colors that a lot of people love. It's just like that perfect baby pink shade. And this year specifically, I feel like they made the bags like really, really well because every, well, not every bag, but many of the bags that I've seen secondhand, they've all been in really, really good condition. And I feel like um, when I bought this, it looked brand new for being like, you know, over 10 years old at the time. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, 
I don't think, yeah, I think it came with everything. And also it's funny. I had a, um, I almost didn't buy this bag because the person that I was buying it from was selling it for like almost retail price at the time. But this was like, you know, years and years ago. So I think the retail price was like around 4,600 or something. It sounds crazy now because like, what is this like 10,000? You can't even get a walk with that amount no. well, in Canada anyway, in Canadian God. dollars. You can't even really, well, maybe you can. Uh, well, oh. the no, yeah, the walk I think in Canadian dollars is almost five thousand before taxes. So wow, yeah, wow. it's it's kind of crazy now the prices. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy because yeah, and I remember thinking like, okay, I don't know if I want to spend, you know, that much money on like a used or um a pre loved bag, especially because like that's kind of how the prices were in store, and so like I almost didn't buy it, but then um I just made the decision too because I was like okay this is a great opportunity this is like one of my dream bags and so I just decided to do it and I think like the year after is when all of those like crazy price increases started like mm. rolling. And so I was like very happy that I had just like made the decision too because like now it doesn't seem like that crazy because you're like this bag is like almost 11,000 or something yeah. I don't even know oh, like crazy, you know. how much it is so yeah I'm very glad that I went through with that because it's, it's definitely one of my favorites Okay, so this would be a good question to ask uh, following that. How do you keep your, your pink uh, pink bags, I'm, so, I'm, I'm assuming, pink bag clean? Also a pink lover. Yes, Clara is also a pink lover. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> I feel so bad because I don't do anything special. I know, Kat, you like just talk about like how you spend so much money like taking care of your bags. And <laughs> I just I do. don't. Yeah. But I um, no, but I also think it's because because I'm in Singapore mm -hmm. and Singapore has is our weather here is not unless I live I don't live in an air conditioned house all the time. But okay. it's really humid here, right? It's humid. So humidity is like um it's like it's like water in the air. Yeah. <laughs> which is really bad for leather. So um there's extra care that we need to do if we want to maintain a bag for longer because Things, I think here things just wear out faster mm -hmm. uh, because of the humidity and the heat, right? Wood, right. Uh, leather, um, materials. So I just need to. So I, I know in um, where you are, uh, in northern side, um, mm -hmm. it's it's not humid at all. It's actually really no, dry. And, it's very yeah, dry. It's dry. So it's actually... Things last so much longer there yeah. uh, compared to stuff here. And I know I think we have quite a few Singaporeans and maybe uh, Malaysian uh, followers here. And uh, it's, yeah, the weather here is just not kind to handbags. So unless yeah. it's in a case, in a cabinet that is humidity controlled, you actually wow. need to take care. Yeah, you actually need to take care of your bags. Like, yeah. And then properly have them, you know, wrapped up, um, condition them here and there. So, yeah, it sounds like a lot, but it's just, it's the environment. It's not as kind. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, that makes sense. I think, like, the only problems that I've ever heard happening to handbags in, like, the super dry climate is, like, maybe cracking. Yeah. Um, just because, it, yeah, the, there's no moisture. But um, I haven't had any of those problems with my bags. Um, basically, like, the way that I keep them like clean I guess is like I do wipe it if something happens but like I mainly just don't wear dark colored clothes because I know the big thing is like color transfer right like people ask me all the time like how do you deal with color transfer I was like I don't wear jeans I don't wear black. <laughs> I don't wear like uh, I don't wear that's like the secret like oh there you go <laughs> that's the question yeah um, so this question is great so do you wear any clothes that are in darker shades <laughs> I mean I do sometimes but like very rarely and I, I do for like casually like when I go to work and stuff because obviously um my job is kind of dirty I work in the kitchen so like I will then but like as ter in terms of like clothes that I wear out like it's almost never a dark shade unless, unless I'm in like the mood for it I will but um yeah it's mostly light colors so that's I know it's like not um like a revelation or anything like people always ask me this question I'm like I'm sorry I don't have a secret to tell you I just <laughs> don't wear dark clothes <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh I have to pull this comment from Joe Joe is in Singapore she says 
in our climate, only the people <laughs> age well. <laughs> our bags do not. And I totally agree. Like the, the moisture, the humidity, it's, it keeps it's us great. Plump. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> great for the skin. That's the thing. Yeah. Oh it's my God. Me, for me, is like, I don't have to take care 100%. of my bags either. Same as Saki. I literally don't do anything. I only wipe it when I. Uh, go on vacation and back like I would yeah. wipe it then um but on the daily if I if I just say use my Birkin or Kelly all I wipe is the hardware I wipe the hardware right, put it back. Right, that's all right. I do yeah. um but on myself though like my own self-care oh my gosh if I don't lotion like I mean properly yes. every inch of my skin yes. I will itch and can't sleep and all that stuff like it's just terrible because I already have dry skin to begin with yeah. So I guess that's the it's the reverse. It's like the you guys like don't have to do any of that. <laughs> yeah, it's the, but on the on the bags, anything that's leather, natural. Oh my gosh! Because mm. uh, I I was reading about it because I was like wondering why are things so yeah. much harder to care for here? Mm, it's yeah. because uh, of this water, this moisture and heat, mm. right? And um, they they well, based on the research. Okay, I don't know, but basically, if there's a lot of moisture. It breeds bacteria, yeah, so you, like, yeah, it gets yeah. it gets moldy faster. It yeah. smells and all that. So I was like, oh my gosh. So I am, yeah, I'm one of those that I, when I use my bag every time I come back, mm -hmm. I would, you know, let it air because you you know it's hot outside, right? Because you need to air it. You can just store it into the box straight away or cut cabinet because right. it's hot and hot is not good. It's humid again. So yeah. I'll leave it out then for a day and then after that I'll wipe it down. I'll pack it and say, oh my gosh, but. So far, based on what I've done for the years and years I've collected handbags, no, there's no problem with my bags. There's only one awesome. bag that, ha yeah, there's only one or two bags that has gotten moldy. And that's because I never cared for it. I just <laughs> tossed it aside. <laughs> and those are like the LV bags, which has the Vaqueda leather on it. Yeah, those yeah. are just nasty because those were the days that I never took care of my bags. Sweaty hands, a little bit, whatever. And yeah, they don't, yeah nasty <laughs> but everything else good good <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome that you're able to find like a routine that works for you i i would be so stressed off i had to take care of my bags that often like i don't think i would have as many as i do like i just can't be bothered <laughs> <laughs> which Actually, is why i'm downsizing because i'm like okay i i think i can't keep up with this routine for so many bags because i you know it's gotten busy but then now i'm like okay i got a you know nice set that i can sort of work around except that this set of bags are like even more expensive like oh my god the stress is like <laughs> at least yeah. there's only like a handful right so that's true that's yeah you true. only clean a handful of bags and they're all your favorites yeah. Yeah. um corinne has this question how do you keep your collection clean and dust free um that's funny massive collection i don't even think that like i have that many for some reason for some reason people think i always like have a lot more bags than i do like obviously i do still have a lot but like i'm I think just your about... nice background because we never yeah. show our background i right. i don't have a background to show <laughs> yeah i think i was talking to a girl and she was like oh i thought you had like 60 chanel bags i was like what <laughs> no way okay. um but yeah so i mean i think because I don't feel like I have a massive collection. I'm able to rotate my bags pretty often. And like, because I'm very like, um, what do you call it? Like very intentional with like the bags that I keep in my collection. I don't have very many ones that I'm like, oh, this bag and this bag can be used for this occasion. Like when I go on vacation, I pretty much only have like two bags that I'm like, okay, these are my vacation bags. Like it's, it's not like, you know, it, each one basically has a purpose and that's kind of how I've curated my collection. So I do feel mm. like I rotate them pretty often and that helps with the dust. And then obviously I just dust. I like wipe off my shelves um, whenever I notice that, you know, it's building up and I do wipe um, my bags when I, when I notice that, but it's, it's not very often since I do use them a lot. So actually not not so much anymore in in the recent years after um i had my kid but um yeah i mean there's no secret you, if, if there's dust you just have to dust it off yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so i i have a follow-up question from our interview questions uh sure. is there one luxury item or bag that got away if there's any 
that you can share? Um, this one's so hard because like I'm one of those people who I'll get really, really obsessed with the bag Yeah. and then um, I'll act like it's the end of the world if I don't get it. It gets away, you know, and like <laughs> I'm very like, no, if I can't find it. But then I don't know, in a couple of months, maybe I'll kind of like forget about it. So like I don't have that feeling for very long. But um, I feel like. There was a bag that I really was looking for. Um, it, it wasn't a specific like type of bag. It was a it was from a Chanel collection, I believe, in like 2016. They had this like really beautiful, um, like a darker, dusty pink kind of color, and like I just really liked it. I think specifically, I was looking at the like square mini because at that time I didn't have one and. Um, Yeah, I remember seeing it like a couple of times. It was that situation where like I would see it so, like sold on pre-loved um, and then I would like take too long to think about it and then it would go away. And then I'm like, okay, it's fine. And then, you know, I hype myself up again by seeing it on the secondhand market again. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then it disappears again. So I feel like what, like maybe that bag is one that keeps like ghosting me a little bit mm. or like, you know, um, I just never had the opportunity to get it, but then I actually ended up getting um, a mini, a mini square not too long ago. Oh my gosh, all the years are blurring together now. I want to say it was like the twenty twenty one S collection. Um, so, Okay. let me see if I have. I don't why I can't find any of my bags right now. Twenty one S is should be the same oh, collection as the top handle caviar rectangular. Oh, so cute! Yeah, that is so I think. cute. Yeah, I think That's you're lambskin right. run, right? Yeah, this is the Yeah. lambskin one. Oh my god, can I tell you a really funny story about this bag? It almost gave me a heart attack because I got this one, um, not pre-loved, but I think I had to go through one of those like personal shoppers. I, Okay. I know people have mixed opinions on those, but um, I really, really wanted this bag and this color was just like so pretty, you know? Yeah. And so I found a personal shopper and she had found this bag in like, Dubai, I think, um, somewhere, yeah, in the Middle East. And she, um, so she has, she said that she got this bag for me and I was like, great. I, the premium wasn't even like that much. So that's why I kind of went for it, you know? And so I had never worked with this, um, personal shopper before, or I might've, but just for like a small other good, like something very, very small, but she had a lot of reviews on Instagram. And, um, I think one of my friends had worked with her before. So I was like, okay, I, I feel safe and confident, um, you know, buying from you. But then, so what had happened was I had bought the bag. I spent, a, you know, a thousands on it. That's just how much a Chanel bag costs. And then um, she was like, okay, everything went fine. Here's your tracking number. It's DHL. DHL is usually very, very reliable. And then I got a notification because I send everything um, to my work. I, I never send anything to my house because there's always somebody at work, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I got the notification that, um, the bag got delivered, the tracking number got delivered. And then when I got there, it was a very like, it was a thin, thin package. I was like, there's, Oh, no, there's no way a bag is in here. And then when I opened it, it was a pair of pants. Like I was freaking out. Cause I thought like I got scammed or like the delivery person switched it or like something like that. Like it was literally just a pair of like khaki pants, like nothing even special about them. And I was like, Oh my God, did I just spend like all of this money? And did I get scammed? Like I was literally like freaking out. And so I ended up texting, um, like the personal shopper that I went to And she was freaking out, too, because she's like, oh, this has never happened. And, like, I was still, like, worried that I was getting scammed by her, you know. So I was just very, like, I don't know, very defensive about it. And, like, just, oh, my God. It was, like, such a crazy day. And it was, like, the weekend, too, I think. So it was, like, very hard to, like, get answers because um, there was just nothing Nothing's open. opened, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so um, – What had happened was she contacted DHL and what had happened was they like made two, like they had two items that were shipped that like had the same tracking number, which is weird because like, yeah, it's It happens, weird. I know. 
Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He, like that's never happened to me before. So I was just like, that sounds suspicious. But she was like, no, no, no. Like they told me that like they can track it from their side and like your bag is still coming. Like, the second tracking number is still coming. I was like, so suspicious. About it. I was like, are you sure? You know? And like because it was the weekend too, it like took an extra day um to get here. But then yeah, the bag finally arrived and I was like, okay, so relieved. And like um I ended up like leaving her a pretty good review because she was super, super helpful, you know, like she was contacting DHL, she was like, you know, doing all these things and like she ended up I mean, I ended up getting it. It was just and it was not her fault at all. It was like all DHL and I had never heard of that happening. So I'm interested to know like how you knew that, Amy. Did you did something happen like that to you? Okay, uh yes, but only because in my case, it was so. So I, I'm wondering how it happened. Like, what are those pants? Who are who do do those pants uh, belong to? I because in my know. case, it's a uh, order from Farfetch, oh, and okay. you know how like sometimes uh, say if I ordered two pairs of shoes and they came from the same mm. place. So instead of putting putting both shoes in one big box, they just oh, send okay. two different boxes, and they would have the same tracking number, but they just are in two different packages okay so that's why so it would be like same tracking but package one same tracking package two so that's why i know that oh, the same okay. tracking number can have two different ship two or more different shipments um yeah whereas in your case i'm just wondering how those pants ended up in your order like in your tracking i don't know and the funny thing is is that i think the pants originated from canada like if you check huh? Yeah, if you check the post, um, like, you know how you can track, like, where it goes? It yeah. It started in Canada, and then it came to the U.S. That way, That's why I got it so fast, uh -huh. um, because it was just really close. And then, but the original back, like, came from Dubai, so it wasn't even, like, the that person who so shipped weird. it. That is so weird. Yeah, it wasn't even, like, the sh person who shipped it, like, shipped two items at the same time, and they happened to get the track. It's just, like, something happened in the system where they, like, printed out the oh. two numbers twice. It was very weird. Yeah, so strange, but it, it all so worked out strange. in the end. Yeah. Of all things, do it on something that is not a Chanel bag. Do it on... <laughs> <laughs> on like a makeup item or something. Yeah, like makeup, blush, or whatever. Oh my god. <laughs> Literally anything but a Chanel bag. Chanel bag. <laughs> I'm still perplexed as to how those pants ended up being in your tracking and... I don't like, know. they must have had a glitch software-wise, because I can't I see so. how that could happen, it, yeah. especially since it didn't originate from the same person, just or shipping the out same different place. things. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow, it's that is another incredible story. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I know, right? It was so, so crazy. And the funny thing is, is, like, I tried to um ask DHL, like, how to ship back the pants, because, like, what if somebody's missing yeah. this pair of pants? Like, what if they need it? And... They're saying, like, when they look at the, um, like, tracking number, like, yes, like, it said that this one, like, came from Canada because they just scanned it in Canada, but um, the, like, return address or, like, the, the, the address that it, like, had gotten um, shipped from was still that one in Dubai, and obviously, oh. like, the personal shopper didn't ship it, so she was like, I don't want it back, like, that's not, <laughs> that's not mine, and so I, like, couldn't even return it, so I just have it, like, sitting here on a drawer, like, <laughs> I don't know what to do with that it, so funny. I know, I'm just oh like, I don't want to throw it out, because, like, what if it's bad luck or something at all? <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so crazy, how, how recent was this? Um, I, I want to say it was in 2021. Okay. Wow. That's good to know. Wow. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's that, that's just, I've never heard this ever before. That is so right? strange. I know. It's super strange. Great story, though. Great story. I mean, like, that is just like, wow, good story. Good. And whenever you take the pants out, you bring back, it brings back memories. So it says you bring out the bag as well. It's like, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I, I remember this whole journey. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Okay, let me pull this question before we go back to our list. Sure. Um, for the love of bags, do you keep the protective stickers on your handbags? So I um actually used to keep them on my handbags, but then some I think it's like been said a couple of times in the luxury community that you like shouldn't 
right? Yeah. yeah. And so I started peeling them off. I think I peeled some of the ones on my Hermes off, like the SO, but not all of them yet because I'm just scared. But like the ones on the bottom have come off and the one on the clasp has come off. But yeah, for the, for the most part, I, I don't keep them on there. Um, I think, Amy, you, you talked about it in a video yeah. or something, right? Like what happened yeah, yeah, to yeah. it? Yeah. I, I highly encourage that everybody p peels their stickers off, es especially if you do live in a more humid climate. But I live in Vancouver, so it's not terribly humid. I mean, we do get a lot of rain, but climate control indoors is pretty good. But even then, just just because uh, Hermes hardwares are pretty sensitive, and I would say the most sensitive is actually rose gold, followed by gold, oh, okay. and then followed by palladium. Uh, with rose gold, I've had... Well, I've had issues on mine, uh, on my first bag, which is why it took so long for me to get it back. Um, and I also noticed on my um, Constant Slim, that little guy, the little exotic piece, um, it's like, just like a little H buckle, right? When I first got it, the first day I got it, I look, so not the surface of the H, but underneath, if you just tilt it and you look, um, there is still a little bit of stickers just around that. I could see that it's sort of like a darker shade of pink. Oh, so interesting. I immediately removed that even on the first day and I started rubbing it because it it already started, it's not tarnishing yet, but it's just starting to like have oxidation. And wow. it's just because it's the nature of rose gold, it's super sensitive. And mm -hmm. so uh, that's why I always recommend anybody to remove it. And because I didn't use my Constant Slim since coming back from Hawaii, like I didn't remove all the ones on, on the surface when I was using it in Hawaii. I came back and I didn't use it for months. Recently, I revisited it because I was, you know, buying belts and everything to, to kind of go with it. And I started looking at it. I'm like, oh, maybe I should peel it. And so I started peeling it. So it's been like how many months now? Um, I want to say five months since coming back from my trip. And I could tell that, you know, it wants to, it hasn't, nothing has happened. There's no oxidation, no tarnishing, but I can tell that the sticker is starting to like stick onto the part. Oh, oh wow. So I was using um, just like a very soft, don't, don't use anything abrasive ever. So just the jewelry cloth or like the sunglasses cloth, those very, very soft ones. I have a Dior one that I use only on Hermes bags. Um, and I just kind of, not polish, but, you know, wipe it, and it was gone. So it's just that sensitive, um, even wow. though it's brand new. And even though there's, like, if you just look at it from the from from the outside, it doesn't look like there's anything happening. Because you, you could tell yourself, like, oh, if I see something happen, I'm going to peel it. But the thing is, even the sticker itself can melt, like the glue itself oh, yeah. can melt and stick. So I could tell that it was wanting to stick. Because you could just press on the hardware and you're like, hmm, it's a bit tacky. So yeah, just, yeah, just remove okay. the stickers. I, I get that if it's a brand new item, if you've only had it for like a few weeks, it's not a big deal. But um, if it's rose gold, I really definitely think that it should be removed as, as soon as possible. Rose gold is just super sensitive. Oh, okay. Yeah. Dang, I, I want to remove it now. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It after. Oh, should I do it on the show? <laughs> do it live? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, gold like, oh. is very, very sensitive. And then okay. gold is also sensitive, not as bad. I But I noticed it like on my gold belt, <laughs> uh, the one, um, the, the the white Kelly belt. I, I, bought it a, I bought it a few months ago, but I only just showed it in a video and did a whole like, styling video with it um so i peeled the sticker during the video and i could see there was a shadow it's nothing it's it's not oxidation or any it's maybe the start of an oxidation but there's a shadow so it's like two different colors between the sticker and the two and the little rivets on on the side oh, no. um so yeah even even gold color can show um or can oxidize quickly as well but wow. definitely rose gold is the most problematic However, if you peel your stickers and you wipe your hardware every time you use it, there's no problems. It's going to keep perfectly fine for a long time. So don't worry if you have rose gold, don't panic. But definitely do take care of it. That's what you just need to do. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think you brought up a good point um, in, like, one of your videos, I think, about how you don't really use the Hermes, like, hardware on the Birkins too much anyway. Yeah. So, like, if Yeah. you're worried about scratching or something, like, It's very it'll probably minimal. be fine. Yeah, Yeah. okay, that's a good point, too. Okay, Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely going to do it after that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's prettier too like it's prettier to Yeah. look at too yeah Yeah, for sure. You get to see the true color. yes yes and every time I kid you not every time if I forget to remove a sticker and I show up at Almez wearing the item I will always get a reminder oh you should remove your sticker every time Mm -hmm. without Oh, exception okay. so even our store the the managers whoever sees it they will be just saying like oh yeah remove those stickers like don't forget it's you know they can't force you and they are aware that a lot of clients don't remove them but they don't like it because if something does happen uh, and if it's really your fault for not removing them then yeah Mm -hmm. that makes for sense the for the Birkin that I um, first received it was already tarnished when I first got it so that was not my fault so that's why they took care of it right away but that's why it also took way longer for me to get it back because they had to send it back replace the hardware and then that took another i forget now it just took forever like it felt Yeah, like eternity yeah I think it took like almost like nine like or ten months yeah like I remember yeah it took laughing at you forever I remember teasing yeah you like oh my gosh it's another pregnancy <laughs> yeah actually oh my yeah god and it was also during the pandemic it oh, okay took the extra time it was extra long like yeah oh my gosh so wow but anyway <laughs> now we know yeah lesson learned <laughs> yeah 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 All right, let's okay take one more, and then we'll go back to our list. yeah Let's do this one. Viv P. Saki, which is your oh favorite pink? Oh, okay. So you have a favorite pink of sh shade of pink. this one's tough like i was saying earlier i always get the comment of like oh all your bags look the same like you have the same pink but i think they're completely different like i i don't totally know to get me it. right like to me i feel like they're they're basically different colors in my opinion i know that's crazy because they all look pink but um yeah i would say definitely the um rose sakura birkin is up there but then hold on i have this other bag or now i'm Now that I'm looking at it, I wonder if it's like a really similar shade. So I have this um, Ooh. It's Louis really Vuitton. it's too. Sure. I have this Capucines that's like a little bit lighter um, now that I'm looking at it. But it's like the same. It's a really similar tone. It's more of like a, um, I guess it looks more peachy pink in this Yeah. Yeah, lighting. I was Warmer. just going to say the LV looks more peachy. Like it's got a bit of hint of orange to it. Like a peach. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why, but the, like, really, like, the very, very slight hint of peach is, like, I like it more than, um, like, a purple undertone. Like, I don't actually, I think in the question it said, like, mauve Sylvest, and I, Yeah, I don't like that I think color. Mauve Sylvest is a, a type, is a color that's, it's also like, it's not quite a mauve color, but it's also Mm-hmm. not quite a pink, not a pure pink color. It's kind of that, has that undertone of mauve in that pink. It's very pretty too, but it's definitely leaning more purple, I want to say. Yeah, I, I agree. My mom has the um, Kelly, oh man, I'm so bad with the names, the the wallet that has the strap on it. What is that Oh, one yeah, called? the Kelly The to-go. To-Go. Yeah. Yeah, the Kelly To-Go. She has that one in the Moth Sebastian. Um, I think it's really pretty to look at, but like for my for my collection, it's a little bit too like on the lilac side. Um, so I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that color like for myself. Um, but yeah, I, I do like a more um, like peachy kind of pink. And then Of course, also, now that I'm looking at it, I do really like this one, the um, the iridescent. There's just something about this color that's super special to me, too. I, I, it must be the shininess and, like, the, you know, the iridescence of it. But I, I really do like this color. And I, I do think that this one is a little bit more, um, like, on the purpley side in some lightings. But then in other lightings, because it, you know, shimmers and it has that shine, it does look more of, like, a peachy pink. So, I don't know. This, this one is... The reason why I didn't grab this one right away is because the color changes a lot, in my opinion. But um, I think I think something like this is probably like my very very favorite shade of pink. 
Oh, so would you even pink. would you say that the LV mm -hmm. pink is even more your favorite than the Sakura pink? I don't know, because like <laughs> looking at it now, they're totally different in my opinion. Like yeah, they now. Are. Now this one is looking a little bit more purpley, but like if I didn't have the LV to compare, I would think that this is my favorite. So mm. I'm not sure. I kind of go back and forth because like now I'm looking at that bag that I just showed you, the um, 21S, <laughs> and I'm like, wait, is this my favorite? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I, I, <laughs> I will say that I have like two types of favorite pinks. Like I have the like really light baby pink and then I have... Um, like more of the darker pink that's mm. still yeah so like if you look at my collection you can see it kind of splits in half like a lot of it is this like on the see it's like on the lighter side mm. and then like I have bags like like this that's more on the darker side yeah 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 so I yeah. have I, maybe it's like I have two favorite shades of pink but um yeah I do definitely like a really light baby pink and then like a little bit of the darker pink too so Nice. So, okay, I have to ask, what about pinks that are uh, really popular now? There is this uh, Valentino, Valentino's pink, that hot. Yeah, the hot one. Hot pink. Is Would that fall into a category that you would consider? Or it's it's a nice pink, but it's not for you? Yeah, I would say it's a nice pink, but it's not for me. I do like seeing the collection because um, I just love seeing like more people like wearing pink and things like that. But as far as for me, I think it's just a little bit too, um, it's a little bit too hot pink, which is funny because I have, I have this bag. I know that, um, yeah, Amy, you have it in black, right? Yeah. Of, yeah. This is, this is like the most hot pink that I have in my collection. And I honestly like didn't even know if I was going to get it for sure. But, um, after I tried it on, cause I had my essay reserve this one for me, um, because she like knew right away that I was going to want this bag. Cause she was like, it's a pink heart. Like you're going to get this <laughs> bag. Right. And so I had her reserve it for me. And then, um, when I saw it in person, I was like, Ooh, I don't know. It's like a little bit too hot, but then, um, it happened to be like spring and summer around the time that this came out. And I was wearing like a white floral dress or something like that. And I was like, okay, in like the spring and summer, like it looks really nice with like florals, like especially like a sundress or something like that. So um, I've only worn it like in the summer. Um, and so I think like this is special in my collection because of the shape and because of everything too. But other than that, like I, I probably wouldn't buy another hot pink bag. It's just, mm -hmm. I, I rarely use this one, you know? So I think mm -hmm. that, yeah, I, I just think that um, those shades of pink are not for me. So the pink, the color is more important to you rather than the actual bag, correct? Yeah, I think, I, I don't know, actually, because, like, um, I'm very specific with the colors because, like, aside from this bag, you can kind of see all of the tones are, like, really similar, and they kind of, like, line up in a mm -hmm. gradient. Yeah. Um, but I'm also kind of like particular on the style of bag too. I, I guess not, not so much right now. I used to be like only structured bags, only top handle bags, like besides like the classic flap. Like I was very, um, like I had a particular kind of bag that I liked, but now I feel like I've branched out a little bit more. Um, and yeah, the, I think, yeah, I, okay, maybe you're right. Like maybe the color is more specific to me because I, I wouldn't buy a bag that's like, not the right color because I, I just know that I won't wear it. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a, before you answer this question, so if you found a bag that is in the most per your in your head the perfect pink, but the bag's not the best. <laughs> <laughs> like it's you know whatever it's just not the not your bag it's you know it's a bag, but it's the perfect perfect pink. Yeah. Did you get it? actually I kind of had this happen um so there is this I so I found like the perfect bag like I, I want to say it was Nordstrom and um in the Nordstrom in Denver there's not very many like different brands but then there was this one like pink bag from the brand called John Batista Valley I'm totally butchering the pronunciation so. yeah but they had this really really beautiful bag and it's one of those brands that like if you know, you know, but it's not like one of those super popular brands, you know, but 
it's still like luxury so it was still like pretty expensive and so I like I loved the color so much it was really I feel like it was really similar to this Louis Vuitton bag and I was debating for a while because I was like oh do I get it like I don't know the brand very well and I'm not sure if I like this bag enough to like spend you know thousands on it for a bag that I don't even really know anything about and so um, I went back and forth on it for a long time but I ended up not getting it because I just didn't think I would use it because I didn't love both the brand and the color and everything. Mm. Like it was, it was literally just the color. So yeah, when, when it comes to handbag purchases for me, I feel like it has to have like more than one thing that draws me to it. Like another reason why I love luxury is because a lot of these handbags that are like older have like a really cool story about like how they were made and why they're this way and things like that. So, um, just with a bag like that, I'm like, I don't, I don't know the story or anything. So, mm. so it mm -hmm. has to, it has to fit not just the color, right? So it has to fit. Firstly, do you like the, firstly, the color that's going to attract you straight away. But mm -hmm. then when you dig deeper into it, you were like, okay, do I like the brand? Do I like the design? Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually very, um, it's funny because I get told a lot that like, oh, you just, you have so many handbags. Like, how do you keep track of them? Like, how do you decide what to wear? But I feel like I'm very systematic with like the bags that I have in my collection. I had this video that I put out. I want to say it's so many years ago now. Like, I look completely different and like, it was just so long ago. But like, this is kind of something that I've kept up with my collection. And it was like, um, like 10 handbag categories for my collection. And it was basically like, okay crossbody bag, an everyday bag, a day to night bag, a tote bag and things like that. So if you really look at my collection, I only have like a couple of bags in each category, like no more than, I want to say like the maximum is maybe three, if even like, I feel like in each category, there's like one or two bags that fit that category. And then it fits like that purpose in my life. And if I have two bags or more than two bags that are in that same category, I'll, I'll normally get rid of it. Like, for example, people ask me all the time why I got rid of my um, pink push-up Matisse because I had a moment with that bag where I really, really loved it. I was using it for everything. But then I was like, okay, honestly, like that was the bag that I went to when I needed something that would be um, like carefree and when I needed to um have something like casual and I felt like I already had a couple of bags in my collection that were like that that I loved even more and so I decided to get our um, arms to sell that one even though I, I loved it so much so um yeah it was just like I'm very systematic about the things that I keep in my collection and then how I wear it and everything so mm. Mm -hmm. okay so Saki in your opinion um what pinks are the most photogenic and I guess those that are less photogenic and then I actually like the follow-up for this question I think this is a great follow-up are you worried for repeating the same shade of pink in multiple bags um so as far so as far as I can tell the pinks that don't photograph well are like they're really I actually don't have any more in my collection but it's kind of similar to um I know this is a Kate Spade bag but do you see how like the color is washed out it's a very very like light pink almost white yeah it's almost white when you look at on it in cam on the camera um so that like nude pink shade I feel like it doesn't photograph well because it just turns white. And I think that shade is popular because a lot of people find it to be more neutral. Um, so that's not necessarily a bad thing that it doesn't, um, that it washes out like that. But for me, I, I like a true pink. Um, so that's why I don't have any more in my collection like that. But yeah, I would say that that one is probably the one that doesn't photograph the best. And then in terms of the other end of the spectrum, I think um, a shade of pink that's a little bit darker, kind of like this, photographs really, really well. Um, shades of pink that have a coral undertone, I've always found that don't photograph well either because it's very, um, it's something about like the, I'm not very good at like the whole color mixing and stuff, so I'm not sure technically like what it is, but um, like the warmth always looks a little bit more like orangey in pictures mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people don't like that. So, um, yeah, I would say like a, a true, like a darker pink like this photographs really well. And then I think this pink photographs pretty well. Mm, yeah. I don't know. 
And then what was the follow-up question? Um, oh. Are you worried about repeating the same shade of pink in multiple bags? I mean, I feel like you could ask, like, a person who has a bunch of black bags if they're, like, afraid of having <laughs> a bunch of black bags, right? Because, like, it's it's basically, like, pink is my my black bag. Like, I, I just have a lot of them. So, I no, I'm not afraid of um, repeating the same color because I like what I like. Like, there's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with, you know, having a whole collection of blacks because, like, people say that's classic, you know. So, I feel like if you just translate that way of thinking into pink, like, that's kind of how I am where I live. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. Mm-hmm. Love it. Okay, let me pull another question from um, our list. All right, here, how about this one? Give some tips to someone who's starting their collection today because you've been collecting it for, you said 2014, like around, was that? Around 2016 or 2017. Can't so remember. yeah, if you had to give somebody today advice, what would you what would you tell them? Oh man, that's so hard because the luxury world is so crazy right now. It's changing you know? so much too. It's changing yeah. so much, and like I don't really know what direction it's it's going. It, it it almost feels like all the brands are coming, trying to be like a little bit more exclusive. I mean, mm. obviously Chanel, but um, I would say. Hmm. It's so hard because I feel like my I've been giving the same advice for years. I feel like like always start with like the bag that you want and like you can obtain Chanel if you want to like just go pre loved or like mm-hmm. you know find um something that isn't too expensive. But now I feel like that is changing so much. Like you were saying, Cat earlier, um the luxury the pre loved market for even you know really old bags is like pretty crazy. Um, cause I, I used to always recommend like vintage bags and stuff too, but now vintage bags are so sought after. Um, gosh, what would I say? <laughs> That's such a hard one. I mean, I would say that you should really, the two things that I've always stuck to is like, follow your heart. Like don't buy bags just because, um, they're cheaper or whatever. I think I really do think that you should always like save your money for the bag that you really want. Um, and if that bag is Chanel, I, I feel really sorry for you because I just don't know where that's yeah. going. But, like, maybe try yeah. to look at the other brands. Like there's a lot of brands that like are not Chanel, but like they have really good quality and like they might not be like as popular or whatever. But I think like you can find something. Um, gosh, I'm. I'm like blanking on like the other brands right now because my collection is like pretty much um, Chanel oriented because I that's just what I loved for so long. Um, but even like Louis Vuitton and stuff, like it's not as crazy, you know. But I was I, I would always say like to a luxury starter to always um, to not compromise like what you want. Like, yeah, there are some compromises you should make. Like, in, like you have to make in terms of price or whatever but um always try to just like save up for that dream bag because I know when um I had a moment where I was only buying bags pre-loved that were like oh this one's cheaper and this one's cheaper and then I got rid of all of those because mm-hmm. I just I wasn't happy with it and then it ended up losing me money because I wasn't able to sell it for as much as I bought it for and I feel like that was just one of the mistakes I made early on that I would say is a very costly mistake to make and it's just better to you know save your money and save it for something that you actually really want and I feel like that still kind of applies in the market today unless it's Chanel. (laughs) I think that's good advice I think for even some of my older videos, I always say that, um, I mean, I've made the mistakes to know that that is the right thing to do, yeah. that don't buy because it's cheaper. And if if it's not the one that you want, just wait, just wait, pay the higher price, save up cl- closer to it and get the one that you want. Because at the end of the day, you will want to get that still, but you've already spent money on other things yes. that you mm-hmm. should have saved for that item. So you... Uh, it's a waste yes exactly and even even if you do resell it like I did you're never gonna get the same amount of money back anyway so you just like wasted money yeah for sure okay I see a couple of really interesting questions I'm gonna try to pull them out 
I feel like my voice is dying a little bit. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> water, we, this, yeah, this we always have water. Your time. Yeah, and, no worries. <laughs> and let us know if you need to like take a break or something. But No, um, I'm good. I'm having a lot of fun. I think this is so much fun. We love having you here. And especially because, like I said in the intro, it's like, you're probably one of the most unique guests that we have just because of what you love, which is like a lot of pink. And yeah. that is so different from like, I mean, a lot of people do like pink too, but it's very clear <laughs> in, in your just like, um, like even how you present yourself, because that's that's what you wear too. And even your hair is pink. So well, at the time, at the time you had pink hair, I think I yeah. remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just so uh, like such a good representation of yourself and it's very mm -hmm. unique because nobody like nobody else on YouTube land is like you that I can think of. There's another, there's one more, but mm -hmm. like you and that other person are the only ones that are kind of like very, very pink. I'm <laughs> curious who is the other one that you can think of? Oh, Lindy's. Oh, okay, Lindy. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. she's <laughs> she's very very pink too. Yeah, but even though she is very very pink too, like you can tell that her preferences for the pink color is. I mean, I, they are similar to yours, but like it's hard to know if it's really the same thing until we like also, you know, maybe. I, ask I think her with one Lindy's. Day. <laughs> I think with Lindy, she does have a preference for pink, but I think she's more like a pastel. Because she's got like mm. soft blues, pastel blues, yes. yeah, yeah, and then little pastel Yeah, green. so she does other colors too. Mm -hmm. yeah, she wants the sweet, cute colors. Uh, yes. But yeah, definitely pink. Definitely a lot of pink. But yours is mm -hmm. just specifically pink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I even have enough. I mean, I have white. I have like my white YSL. Right. And then, yeah, in terms of luxury bags, this is the only other color that I have. <laughs> <laughs> pretty creepy i'm curious have you ever bought any other colored bags that you probably don't have anymore but have you um yeah other than so bag, we, white other than white and pink when not not luxury though so like when i was okay. yeah when i um was younger i liked a little bit more variety like sometimes like in the summer i like blue um actually in my collection right now i have two bags that aren't pink but they're not luxury. So I have one bag from Vivian Westwood that's black. Mm. Um, but it's but it's a heart bag. So that's why, oh, okay. you know, it's still got a little bit of my personality. And then I have another Kate Spade bag that's blue. I just really liked I, – I like blue sometimes during the summer. Mm. So. Mm -hmm. so I thought this question was interesting. Do you find it easy to shop for clothes because you go straight to pink? And is it easy to coordinate your looks or are you more particular, very particular about putting shades together? Um, yeah, I, it's actually very easy to shop. Um, my husband enjoys this fact about me a lot because he hates shopping and I obviously <laughs> really like it. But I'm very like streamlined and very like um, fast when I shop because I basically can walk in the store and I, I call it like the scanning method. I basically <laughs> feel like a robot. I scan the room and I'm like, okay, no pink. And then I walk. Out. <laughs> it's like, very, it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. And so, so yeah, it is, it is a lot easier um, when you only like one color. I mean, sometimes like during the winter, I like, you know, whites and, and I mix black too. So, um, sometimes I'll look at other stuff, but, um, yeah, it, it does make it a lot quicker to, to only like that one shade. And then in terms of like coordinating, um, I, I'm one of those people where like, if I have like an outfit that I've paired together, I kind of like get it stuck that way. Like if this skirt mm. goes with this top, like I normally just wear those two things together. So I don't even think that I'm very good at coordinating. I'm just very like once, once an outfit has been coordinated, it just kind of sticks there. And so I, I like to buy like outfits together. That's why I really love sets. Like a lot of mm. my pieces are like the two piece sets that just come together or they're just dresses. So you don't have to like, pick out too many pieces um so I, I don't know if it makes it easier or harder in that sense but I'm just not very good at coordinating I think if, if anything this is the perfect way to not have to stress out about coordinating because you already are coordinated 
and everything yeah. goes true. Well <laughs> true, true. Although I will say that I'm very particular about like what pinks go together. Cause mm. like, um, I, I actually don't have a ton of pink clothes. Well, okay. I wouldn't say that I do have a lot of pink clothing, but, um, I, I don't have, I have more white clothing than I do pink clothing because I feel like mm. white goes with all of the shades of pink bags yeah. that I have. But um, when you wear pink on pink, they have to be specific. Mm, it, like, right. Yeah, the choice has to be very specific. Um, so I will say that when I'm coordinating like that, like in terms of shades, um, like a pink dress with a pink bag, um, I will be very choosy about it. That makes wow. a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is this interesting color. like i don't uh, even know is, like it if is, it's interesting it or not i just i feel like when i talk about pink i sound like a crazy person I'm like, <laughs> no. do people think about colors this much especially just like one shade of, or one color you know but i don't know i just like what i like <laughs> maybe i i wonder if it's just um that's just my own theory that um like there's a lot of people that only wear black or mostly have only black bags, but we don't say much about them. I mean, they are known for that maybe, but no. um, it's less common to, instead of black, to be just pink. Yeah. I think that's why. It's mm -hmm. just more interesting just because it's less common. Not sure. that it's weird or anything. It's just less common. And like I almost, you know, like when when I see you like on your Insta page and everything, I almost wonder if every time you walk out the door and you're out and about, if you ever get stopped very, like may, maybe you, I wonder if you get stopped often by people complimenting you and just, it's unique. I, like I think yeah. you know, the, the average person will blend in, whereas mm -hmm. you stand out, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I do. I do get um, commented a lot, especially like when I was um, like pre baby, when I used to dress up a lot, you know, and it's so funny, because I feel like my appearance is very, um, like abrasive in many ways. <laughs> so like, if it's not like, if I'm not wearing an all pink outfit, I could be wearing like a t shirt, and I have like a bunch of tattoos and stuff, right. you know, so it's like, I there's a lot of there, there's a lot to digest when you look at me. And yeah. I'm very, I'm very well aware of that. Um, and so, yeah, when I, when I do get stopped, I used to be really nervous because, um, the, where I live, people don't dress up very often. Like, mm. like even if you go to a bar or like anything, like everybody's just wearing like t-shirts and flannels right. and jeans. And so I used to think that like, oh, people are going to say something mean, you know, to me or something, but everybody's so nice. Like they always, yeah. Like every time I've gotten stopped, it's because people are like, oh, I like all your pink or like. Yeah, I like your outfit. So, so yeah, I do. Yeah. I do get compliments, and it feels really good. Um, but yeah, I just it, it feels good to like, um, just be able to like express myself like how I want, and like generally people take it really nicely. On in in person, on um, online, it's a different story. Yeah, <laughs> online there are online. Yeah, but, just yeah. ignore everybody online. Sometimes this can be nasty, but uh, yeah. it's interesting because like what you said, even though a bit. For me, pink would not apply entirely, but things like you said, you know, how you coordinate it. And if you keep them, you know, if it's already coordinated and it works, you should, mm -hmm. you should just keep it that way. And that's a good tip because I always find coordinating clothes so difficult. But what you yeah. just said sort of made sense. I was like, yeah, I could do that. I know a couple of pieces that go together. They should stay yeah. together, not like split them. And then when I wear that top again, I'm like, oh, which yeah. pair should I go? But I already found that perfect mm -hmm. piece. So I should, so those are tips, right? So I think those are really interesting and I, I should try it out. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think a lot of people um, always think, oh, you have to like mix it up to get more use out of the things. But if you're like, if you have an outfit that you really like, it's okay to wear it as many times as you want. You know, I know that in the world that we live in nowadays with like people photographing outfits like sometimes people feel weird about like wearing an outfit a couple of like more than once or like you know a couple of times in a row for multiple occasions or something but I totally disagree like if I like an outfit I'm gonna wear it as much as I want <laughs> yes I yeah. agree wear it until there's just like I don't know which <laughs> event this was but I'm yeah. wearing the same dress <laughs> yeah I think it's fine um I'm so sorry my uh laptop is dying i'm gonna go grab the charger oh, quick. yes okay? oh, go ahead go ahead, Please go okay. ahead. i'll be right back yes <laughs> we'll add you back when she comes back 
but oh wow. it's so cool though so many good tips i got yeah. a good tip on that i'm gonna i'm gonna try it out i mean because i always wear things that are just easy so always be some top with jeans jeans denim but actually if i were to be a bit more hardworking and think about it you can actually coordinate your things properly so i'll give it a go well this is something that i found that you know <clears throat> like you know how sometimes it's the same top but somehow you can have good outfit days and then somehow you can have bad outfit days just just because if you didn't put it together with the right combo or the right as in like what you found appealing and um that flatters your body uh then yeah that's usually why sometimes having um like the top there's nothing wrong with it but it, as long as it goes with what you're wearing on the bottom too or even the accessories um yeah yeah mm -hmm. and which you always I I always try to photograph that's why I always try to photograph when I have a cute outfit on and I feel like oh yeah I just want to remember this this outfit mm. so that I can put it back together yeah. which is why you'll rarely see me photograph when I don't feel cute <laughs> like when I don't feel cute I'm just like I don't want to bother <laughs> yeah yeah you're like I don't want to remember this yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny Okay, so Tammy has a great question. Uh, which are your top three daily bags that you use and rotate with? Oh. Okay, so this one I think is pretty easy. Although, why don't I even have my foot here? Okay. So you're going to see that I'm wearing sweatpants. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> we are, so actually, I'm, I'm wearing PJs on my, as my bottom, so. Yeah, it's like only the top half matter yeah. on YouTube. <laughs> That's so this one is me anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so this one is my one of my top like daily bags in terms of bags that I gravitate towards. Um, just day to day, like going to the groceries, like literally running around with my kid and things like that. So this is um, obviously the Gucci Marmont. It's one of those bags that like I never thought I would buy, but then for some reason when I saw it in this size specifically, this is like the larger size, and that it came in pink, I was like, I don't know why, but I'm really drawn to it. Mm -hmm. And like I told you guys earlier, like I don't have very many things in like silver or palladium, so I was like kind of worried about that with this bag. But I actually found that this is like literally one of my number one used bags. It's just so easy mm. and carefree and like I can stuff so many things in it. Right. Like, yeah. And so um, especially in this size, like I feel like this is just one of those daily essential bags for me. And um, yeah. And the fact that it doesn't um, like the wear, the wear isn't too crazy. I know that Gucci Marmont's usually rare right here that's just normal so I've accepted that it looks like that but um yeah you don't have to worry about the leather or anything like that so definitely this one and then my Givenchy Antigona I know this is like mm. one of those classic staple bags that a lot of people have but it's for a reason like this bag just can hold so much and especially now with the baby I feel like this one um I can handle like all of my stuff and then also a couple of things that he needs like diapers and snacks and stuff like that um so this would be my second one and then i love that your most used bags are like non-chanel <laughs> i i know i was actually gonna grab one more because i was like okay maybe i should say a chanel bag but like honestly like if i'm being honest my third most used bag is this one oh, oh cute. Is, uh, <laughs> thank you so this is the um louis vuitton papillon bb um it's from that collection called by the pool i think it was mm -hmm. and, yeah it was a couple yes. of years ago now and i the reason why i love this bag is because it's super casual and it has that like really great um like thick strap that goes with it mm -hmm. so i feel like whenever i um I mean, it's obviously kind of small, so if I need to carry a lot of stuff, I also need to carry a tote bag with me. But recently, um, I have, like, the diaper bag with me, so if I need to carry anything extra, I put it in there. And then this is just really easy to throw over, like, a crossbody bag. And so um, – and, and the leather on this one is the Empreint leather, so it's very um, – it's not super carefree. Because of the, yeah, it's, it's, it's durable. Really durable. 
-hmm. yeah it's pretty durable and even though the collar is really light I mean because the leather is so durable I feel like I'm never babying the bag I, I think the reason why Chanel isn't one of the bags that the question is like the main three daily ones is because yeah. like, I, I don't wear Chanel daily I it's my it's one of my favorites um for sure but but it's not something that I wear like all the time every day it's just um yeah they're more like occasion bags in my opinion or like when I'm going to the mall kind of bags um where I you know can take the time to like have the mental capacity to baby mm -hmm. it a little bit more than like something like this yeah, yeah. um so yeah and Do you, you don't wear dark colors thing? anyway what <laughs> No, uh, sorry, I said you don't wear dark colors, so right. you can cross body light color bags, no problem. Yeah, I didn't even like consider that a problem until like I really thought about it because I was like, oh yeah, if you have jeans or something, that would be difficult. But I don't wear jeans. <laughs> <laughs> That's super helpful for for light colored bags because yeah. I, if you don't wear jeans, which I think. That's also very unique because like, I think the majority of people, most people wear jeans. I almost, mm, I think 99% of the time I'm wearing jeans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, even my shorts are jean shorts usually. Very, very yeah. rarely are they like linen sometimes. Okay. Uh, un unless I'm wearing a dress, then, then mm -hmm. yeah, there's no jeans. But otherwise I'm wearing jeans, especially uh, if it's not the summertime because it's too cold otherwise. Do you have yeah. a vacation bag? Yeah, um, I think I I think they're asking this because I mentioned earlier that I have like my like go to vacation bags, and one of them um, I already mentioned is my Gucci Marmot. Mm -hmm. This is like my number one vacation bag, and actually um, the other two bags that I always bring on vacation is this one. I know that it seems kind of weird because it's very like thin like you can't really hold anything in it but the reason why I love bringing this on vacation is because I have like my day bag but then when I want to um go out at night and like be a little bit fancier maybe go on a date with my husband or something I bring this one because it's super easy to pack like it's super thin yeah. so you can just stuff it like in between like clothing okay. or whatever and then um you only need your essentials anyway when you're going out at night so I always bring um, this one with me just to have like another bag to switch up with and then um my other go-to bag gosh it used to be it used to be my coco handle because um mm. i really liked traveling with it and i liked having a I, I just really like chanel so like mm -hmm. when i get the opportunity to go on vacation um, I, I like to bring it, but lately for the past couple of vacations, it's been a little bit too small for me with the baby. Um, so I wouldn't say this is my like go-to vacation bag anymore, but it definitely um, was pre-baby. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was dying to ask you this question too, but we'll just <laughs> ask you now since Kobe is also wondering are you more team Birkin or team Kelly? <laughs> this, is, this is so hard. I feel like I switch back and forth all the time. Actually, let me get my Kelly because yeah, I haven't showed you guys yet. Okay. <laughs> Oops, let's. Uh... I think this so, yet. so, this is my um, Rose Confetti Kelly 28 in Epsom mm -hmm. and Cellier. So I got this one pre-loved, and then this is obviously the 25. Someone um, mentioned earlier today that, like, it's funny how big of a difference, like, the sizes are between 28 and 25. Mm -hmm. Like, I only notice when you're putting it together like this. But um, anyway, so I think because I haven't used the Birkin as much, and it's because it's, like, a newer bag in my collection, I've... I think I'm still Team Kelly. Like I was, I was mm. Team Kelly from the beginning because, obviously, that's the one that I bought first. But I just really love the strap and I love the um, like boxiness of it. I'm I'm more of like a structured bag kind of girl. That's where, like, a lot of the bags that I bought in the beginning were all structured bags, and then this one is a little bit more slouchy. I mean, it's still pretty structured, but. Um, and, and I also don't love the fact that this doesn't have a strap, although the mm -hmm. time that I've used it, yeah, I, when I used it, it was fine. Like, I think you girls were saying, like, it fits pretty good in the crook of your arm. Um, my arm, I don't think is as skinny because it doesn't go all the way up. Oh, it goes pretty still, far. Yeah, it goes pretty far. And I think that this yeah. is pretty comfortable. Right. And it's, it's very comfortable to hold just like this, too. And I do like 
um, the fact that you can just open it really quickly. Mm -hmm. I hate having to um, undo the strap on this. So I kind of keep it like not not closed or not open, but like, you know, not turning the lock. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's easier to open. But I do hate how like cumbersome it is to like, you know, have to move the flap out of the way and things like yeah. that. So if the Kelly was an open bag with the strap and the top handle, I think that it would be the perfect <laughs> bag. <laughs> It would be a Birkin. But, it would be a Birkin with straps. <laughs> it would be a Birkin with straps. You're right, you're right. No, but, but, but the structure, too. It would have to be like the Cellier. I guess they do mm. make Cellier Birkins, don't they? They do. They do, yeah. That. It's just very rare. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think I think be because of the functionality of this bag, I, I prefer it. But I don't know. I could be suede team Birkin if I carried this a little bit more um, mm -hmm. because I, I do love the fact that you can just open it so quickly and your stuff is just right there so yeah yeah so i i find myself going back and forth a lot too but it also depends on just what i need it for honestly yeah i i feel like is that probably the reason why you didn't go for another kelly for your so that you went for a birkin because you just think that you need both in your collection yeah, yeah, I think, I yeah, sense. I'm, I, like I said before, I'm not the type of person who likes to own, like, multiples of the same bag, so I think, like, I'm, I'm pretty much, I don't know, okay, never say never, but I feel like I'm, I'm done-ish with, like, Hermes, um, in terms of, like, Birkins and Kellys, like, I do mm. still, enjoy, yeah, it's interesting, I, I don't feel like a lot of people, um, can say this after, especially after getting one, because usually if, you're like, <laughs> if you get one, you're, oh, you're like, I want more. So I think like the only other, like, like in terms of Birkin or Kelly that I would really want is a mini, because this one's my mom's and I, I love it so much. It's so cute. Um, but I think that obviously I only like two colors from Hermes, the Rose Sakura and the um, Rose Confetti. So if I could find a Rose Sakura mini Kelly, I think that would be the um, only other Birkin or Kelly that I would get um but yeah I think I just wanted one Birkin one Kelly and then I'm like okay it's good this is more of an accessory it's not it's not really yeah true. true I mean I don't know Kat you just got one not too long ago right do you do you feel the same about it being an accessory yeah it's so small you fit nothing so in it nothing you put you put your lipstick and that's it close the bag <laughs> Yeah, it's it's so small, but like it's so cute. Like I just, yeah. it's I a really photogenic bag. So it photographs yeah. really well. It adds to the outfit, um, but really, if it it's it's so so small, I guess you could use it as um, well. If you're okay with stuffing the bag, you could fit a little bit more. But it is very mm -hmm. very tiny. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's just an accessory. It adds something to the whole look. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just like a pop. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so maybe we will, uh, since we were a little bit delayed at the beginning and there's only five minutes left before 11, well, 11 p.m. here local time. So maybe we'll end with, uh, okay, actually, We'll answer this question and then I'll end with one of the questions that I wanted to ask you. So do you have a favorite size for Almez? Um, well, I only have the 25 and the 28. Yeah. So I can't really say if um, like compared to the 30, but I will say that um, the, my dream Birkin size was a 30. Um, mm. I had looked at it. Yeah, I had looked at it at the real, real like one time in person, and then my mom actually got a thirty black Birkin, and I I just really loved that size. I thought it was like the perfect everyday carry. But now that I have this one, I will say I do love the um size compared to like my body as well. Like I'm not like I'm pretty short. I'm not like the most petite person but I do feel like this one is really proportionate to me and I do feel like even though it's a 25 size it can still hold a lot so um I, I think just because I have it in comparison now I'm like whoa the 28 kind of looks big um so so I would say like right now I really enjoy the 25 size but um it, it's hard to say because I, I don't have all the sizes to compare how sh how tall are you I'm five three Oh, so oh. you're probably 
just a tad shorter than me. If not, we're very similar because I was told I was 5'4", but some people believe that I'm more like 5'3 <laughs> and a half. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're pretty similar. So I, I can understand why the 25 size is sort of like that perfect in between. And it still holds a lot. So yeah. I want to ask you and maybe end with this general question. So for your overall luxury journey so far, right, mm -hmm. um, from your collecting um, since the beginning, if you had to start over, what would you do differently or would you do anything differently? Um, I think this is a really good question. I think I mentioned it a little bit earlier today, but um, the whole not just buying things because they're cheaper, I feel like was one of those things that was a big mistake in the beginning. It just, like I said, wasted a lot of money. And um, I think I also wouldn't, hmm, this, this one's hard because I do like where my collection has ended and I feel like it wouldn't be like this unless I made those like other mistakes too, you know, but I definitely, um, man, I just, I feel like that was definitely like my biggest one. Let's see. I mean, looking back on my journey, I feel like I, I did a lot of things. <laughs> I feel like I did a lot of things, right? Like, I feel like I, um, I definitely like went for my dream bags first and I do feel like a lot of people don't do that even though I did buy a, a lot of other things too. Um, I Okay, actually I thought of one. I wouldn't have bought so many things so quickly maybe. Like I think another reason why I sold a lot of bags and like rotated my collection a lot is because I um, like impulse bought so many things even if I didn't know um, if I was going to love them forever. So I, I definitely feel like I would have researched each bag a little bit more than I than I did like especially the expensive bags like I feel like expensive bags should never be like impulse purchases or purchases that you even think for a couple of days like you should think for weeks or months for like you know one of those expensive bags so I feel like um I wish I would have done just a little bit more research for each one so I wouldn't have to like rotate my collection so much and and sell my bags and and things like that mm-hmm you know what you just said is it's um it's true, but I think you were also I mean we were all in that period where yeah a lot of marketing was out there right and yeah. it was all about if you don't get it now um, yeah. you won't be able to get it anymore so yeah. that logical thinking process <laughs> which probably is innate in you because you you know what you like right mm -hmm. you know what you like uh you you research you know that you need to think about it. But it wasn't given a chance, right? So you had yeah. to go through the whole, oh, I'm just buy it now, impulse buy it because I, I don't know, it'll be sold out. Um, but of course, looking back, you're like, oh, if only I had that opportunity to do it. But actually, you, we, I'm not saying it's not our fault, but in a way, <laughs> it was also um, how it was with a lot of the luxury things yeah. at that time. And now we're just clever. Now we're just wiser. That's all. So <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I mean, that's why I was saying like, I, there's things that like, sure that I regret, but at the same time, like those things made me like learn more about like what I like and the process of buying luxury. And it made me like smarter, I guess, when buying luxury. And I don't know if I would have ever gotten here if I hadn't made those mistakes. So like, I, I don't even know if I had changed that from the beginning, if like I would be as, like you said, cat, like as wise as I am today or whatever. Like, yeah, because like, you, yeah. you can resist it now. You can resist it. You can resist all these um, limited edition. Get it now. You can, and an essay will tell you, like, it, I don't know if I can hold it for you. You'll be like, okay, it's all right. Because you've already weaned that whole FOMO uh, impulse uh, bug out of your system. Because if you didn't, you won't yeah. know until you don't until you've gone through it. I mean, that's how I personally feel. And because you can beat yourself about, about the whole like, oh, you know, if, 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 I, if I could do it better. Yeah. But you wouldn't know. Right. And and I think like to that point about the limited edition stuff and it's like, okay, I've, I've missed the limited, could, I, I've missed the limited edition collections and I survived. And I survived. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so like, no, <laughs> so like knowing that I'm like, oh, okay, I can get through this. It's painful right now. It sucks with the FOMO, but like, I know that I can survive and I'll make it out. <laughs> True. <laughs> 
it's just like just from today's getting to know you better uh and you saying that you feel like you did a lot of things right and it doesn't sound like you have a lot of regrets because we also asked you if um there was anything that got away and i don't think there was any specific you mentioned that that one pink chanel yeah True. But other than that, like, I, I feel like you always just stayed so true to yourself and you, I, I don't think you could have done it differently. That's how I feel. Yeah, I think like a, a good takeaway from just my whole personality and lifestyle and stuff is that like, I think sometimes people are afraid to like lean into like what they really like and mm. what they um really want because it's not the norm or like people are afraid of other people judging them and I think like all throughout my life not even just luxury like I mentioned earlier about the tattoos thing like I've always been very sure of who I am and I've been lucky in that sense because I know a lot of people aren't and I've always just kind of like leaned into like okay this is what I like this is who I'm gonna be I mean I have blonde hair too you know I've always I've decided from a long time ago that I wanted to have blonde hair so um, yeah, I've just always leaned into like, this is what I like, and this is what I want to do, and just went for it. And yeah, you will get judged. Like, there's people out there who aren't nice. But at the same time, like, I feel like I'm so much happier being my true self than trying to please other people. And I think that's one thing that other people should really take away from my whole obsession with pink is that it, it's okay. Like, if you if you like this, or you like that, and it's not the norm, like, who cares? Like if it makes you happy, mm -hmm. like yeah. you can, yeah, you can like get along with other people in different ways. Like you don't have to please them in every single way. Like the, the most important thing is like making yourself happy and pink makes me happy. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Love that so much. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. That's so true. Be true to yourself. Yeah, and okay. exactly. And it's okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we loved having you here, Saki, and it was so wonderful getting to know you more. And oh, sorry, oh, my alarm. <laughs> alarm is saying bye bye. So <laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for spending your precious two hours, two hours plus with us uh, since you've had to be here a little bit earlier to get ready. But um, yeah, I it was just amazing. We would love to have you back on a future oh my gosh. episode if you have. I would time. love to come I back. I would love to come back. It it didn't feel like two hours at all. That's so strange. Told you, we told you. It just yeah. goes like that. I know it, it's really awesome, and I love talking to you girls. So like, yeah, please invite me back. I would love to come. Oh, back. we will oh, for we'll, sure. We'll, we'll, we will. I would love to like be on one of those shows where you like have a specific topic to talk about too. I feel like yeah. those are really fun yeah definitely cool well, thank you so much and um thank you. thank you to all the listeners and viewers and those that will watch post live but we hope you enjoyed this and um we'll see you again next week so yeah yeah don't don't forget to follow saki if you don't already i will have her channel linked in the description i'll change it right now since we've had to recreate this <laughs> session very quickly but um yeah We'll uh, yeah, we'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank Have you. Bye. Have a good night. <laughs>